वेलकम बैक गैस सो द बेस्ट प्ले स्टेशन टू एम लेटर इन द वर्ल्ड पी सी एस एस टू जस्ट गॉट बेटर अ न्यू सेटिंग कॉल सॉफ्टवेयर कलर ट्रेंडर हैज बिन एडेड टू द नाइटली बिल्स इट फिक्सेज कलर एंड लाइट ऑक्लूजन इश्यूज इन नाइनटीन नोन गेम्स इंक्लूडिंग बर्न आउट थ्री ड्राइवर पैल लाइन्स एंड सेगा मॉडल टू गेम्स लेट मी जस्ट ओपन द गिट अप पेज वी कैन इनेबल द सॉफ्टवेयर कलर ट्रेंडर सेटिंग फ्रॉम द मैनुअल हार्डवेयर फिक्सेज सेटिंग Now the following games have already been added to the database. For these games, if we just enable the game fixes setting, we don't need to manually enable the software color trender setting. It will be applied automatically. These are the issues that have been fixed with this update. For example, for burnout games, sun occlusion issue has been fixed. In these games, sunlight was visible through the geometry. In driver parallel lines, car people colors have been fixed. I'll be showcasing a few of these issues. Now I have already uploaded PCSS to my latest beginner's guide video, but that video is old and outdated now. I uploaded that video like two years ago. A lot has changed since then. The emulator now supports Vulkan, so let me just quickly show you how to set it up. Just open PCSS 2's website. There you go. Go to download. Emulator is available for different platforms: Windows, Linux, Mac OS. I'll be downloading the Windows build. Version 1.6 is the stable build. It is almost two years old, as you can see. Just scroll down and look for the nightly builds. Here it is mentioned. These builds are intended for those who want to or require being on the bleeding edge. They may contain unresolved bugs or issues. Use it at your own discretion. With this in mind, from here just make sure you download the build version 1.7.3500 or any of the newer builds. I'll download this build. Click on it. Its GitHub page will open up. Here you can see different builds are available. It is recommended to select the AVX2 instruction set build over the SSE4 instruction set build. AVX2 build is going to give you better performance. Go for the Qt builds if you want the newer interface. So I'll just download this build. Now we just need to extract the contents of the archive file. You can extract it anyway on your PC, except for a folder that requires admin permissions. For example, program files folder in the C drive. Don't extract it there. I'll be using Winra to extract the contents of the archive file. You can see these are all of the files in the E drive of my PC. I've created this folder. You can see its name. You can name it anything you want. I have extracted the contents of the emulator here. Now, guys, this emulator requires PlayStation 2's BIOS file in order to run. BIOS file and PlayStation 2 games are copyrighted software. You are required to dump the BIOS file from your own PlayStation 2 and dump your own PlayStation 2 game. Let me just show you where to place this BIOS file in the root directory of the emulator. Just open this BIOS folder. When you'll open it for the first time, this folder will be completely blank. This is the BIOS file that you need to paste here. These two files will be created automatically when you run the emulator. That's it. Emulator is ready to use. Let's just start it. Auto updater detected a new update. I'll just click on Remind me later if you want to download and install it. Just click here. So first we need to specify the directory where we have placed our game ROMs. Just click on Add Game Directory. This is the directory where I have placed my games. Just click on Select Folder. Yes, as you can see, our games have been detected. Now let me just show you the global settings. Click on System and then click on Settings. The emulator has a lot of settings available, but we are only required to tweak a few settings like the resolution, API, etc. So these are the interface settings. From here, I have just enabled the Start Full Screen setting. Rest of the settings are left as this. You can see the version of them later here. From here, I can disable the enable automatic update check. Entirely up to you. Game list. We have already done this. This is the directory where I have placed my game ROMs. BIOS very important. If you haven't specified the directory where the BIOS file is present, you won't be able to run any game. You can see my BIOS has been loaded. Japan version one. I have enabled fast boot setting. Patches the BIOS to skip the console's boot animation. 
then we have the emulation settings i'm using the default settings from my side i have just checked the enable widescreen patches setting just make sure enable speed limiter setting is checked otherwise the game will be running in a fast forward banner you can see fast forward speed is set to 200 percent by default so when you press the fast forward hotkey that is the tab key game will be running at this speed it will achieve 120 fps for the ntsc version 100 fps for the pel version we can increase this value if we want then we have the system settings again default make sure these two settings are enabled will help in improving the performance then we have the advanced system setting again i'm using the default settings just make sure this setting is enabled from here enable game fixes setting it automatically loads and applies game fixes to known problematic games on game start this setting works for most of the games even the software clutter render setting is applied to some of them then we have the graphics setting from here we can change the render vulkan api is recommended for the best performance in most of the games name of your gpu is shown here display tab i have set the aspect ratio to fit to window screen we can choose from these options 4 is to 3 16 is to 9 rest of the settings here are left as this then we have the rendering tab from here we can change the internal resolution i have a full hd monitor so i have selected 3x native resolution full hd we can go as high as 8x native 2880p resolution 6x native is 4k resolution if you have a high-end gpu you can try increasing the resolution it's entirely up to you rest of the settings here are left as this now from here i can enable the manual hardware render fixes setting if i just enable it it will give me access to these two tabs hardware fixes and upscaling fixes if we have already enabled the game fixes setting we are not required to enable this setting as most of the fixes from here will be applied automatically so i'll just uncheck it disable it not dumping any textures so i'll just leave this tab then we have the osd settings i have enabled these parameters it will basically show these values like the in-game fps cpu usage gpu usage you can disable them if you want entirely up to you advanced tab left as this then we have the audio settings default then we have the memory card setting from here we can create multiple memory cards of different sizes as you can see i have a 64 mb memory card so creating a new card is very easy just click on create here select the size i'll select 64 mb and name it anything click on ok memory card has been created now we just need to place it in the port 1 so just right click on it and select use for port 1 there you go i'll just go back to my previous memory card we can format the memory card via any game when the first save file is created the emulator also supports save states it has 10 slots available in order to create a save state just need to press the f1 key in order to select the next save state slot need to press the f2 key in order to go back to the previous save state slot just need to press shift and f2 keys together in order to load any save state just need to press the f3 key network and std settings left as this then we have the folder setting directories for cache cover snapshots and save states have been mentioned here then we have the achievement setting this setting was added recently to the emulator it now supports achievements via retro achievements you need to create an account on this website it is free then make sure this setting is checked enable achievements then click on login enter your retro achievements account credentials and then login that is it this is the website use the same credentials in pcss to emulator so guys these were the global settings now i'm going to show you how to configure the input controls i have connected my wired xbox one controller to the pc so just click on settings and then click on controller the emulator also supports DualSense and DualShock 4 gamepads so if you are using any one of these gamepads just make sure enable STL input source setting is checked I am using an Xbox One controller so I will just check this setting enable X input input source you can see my gamepad has been detected the emulator also supports mouse and keyboard controls 
so i'll just select my gamepad here now in order to map the keys i'll just click on automatic mapping select my controller and that is it our job has been done you can also manually map the key it's entirely up to you first i'll be running burnout 3 we'll be showing you the per game setting from here we will be enabling the software color render setting as well first we have the summary section from here we can obtain the crc code this is very useful when we are looking for pnac patch files for any particular game interface setting global settings again emulation setting global setting now if we don't enable or disable any particular setting global settings will be used now let's say i want to enable the enable cheat setting i'll just click on the box you can see tick is shown meaning this setting will be applied now let's say i want to disable it i click on the box again it's completely blank so this setting won't be applied now i'll just leave it as it is global gray box system settings again default then we have the advanced system setting from here i'll just disable the enable game fixes setting as first i just want to run the game without the software cloud render setting enabled in order to show you the bug game fixes setting these are left as this now if you are wondering from where to obtain settings for any particular game you can refer to pcss2 wiki page for that game graphic setting from here just go to the rendering tab to manually enable the software cloud render setting just enable manual hardware render fixes setting go to hardware fixes from here we can tweak this setting software cloud render by default it is set to zero disabled in order to enable it we can select one normal but first i'll just run the game without the setting enabled so i have disabled it for this game i have enabled these settings as well auto flush and preload frame data for this game if we just enable the game fixes setting from the advanced system setting we won't be required to tweak these settings they will be applied automatically so now let's just run the game 